do you struggle sometimes with imposter syndrome? How do you cope with sexism in STEM? It's a very important question. Yeah, I learned a lot that year. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm a astrodynamics software engineer working for a space company and I'm also a Cambridge mathematics graduate. So this channel is all about things STEM. I am obsessed with space, physics, maths, tech, you name it. And this channel is just a place where we can nerd out about stuff like that. Today I am doing a question and answer video. So basically I set up a STEM account on Instagram and the purpose of that was that I could just nerd out about cool stuff that I'm doing day to day, like reading cool books and also what I do on my job as well. So I set up that account and yeah, it kind of went crazy. Uh, I had a couple of videos go crazy. I just posted on my story saying, ask me anything and I got a lot of questions. So I'm gonna try get into some of them today. I'm gonna start by saying that two of the most popular questions that I got asked were, the first one was, how do I get into the space industry? I'm currently doing this job or I'm currently studying this. How do I get into the space industry? And that was asked a lot. So what I'm gonna do is make a separate video on that because there's quite a lot of detail that I, I would like to go into regarding that and I want to do the video justice. And also people asked, what is it that I do at work? So as an overview, I'm an astrodynamics software engineer, which basically means I do all the maths and physics behind space simulations and spacecraft simulations. So at my work, we're building a mission planning software and essentially all the maths and physics that goes behind mission planning, that's all me. So I work on all of that. So yeah, that's an overview, but I'm gonna be releasing, uh, I've done a day in the life of just working from home edition, and I'm gonna do a day in the life working in the office edition. and I'll I'll narrate that so that you can understand what it is that I'm doing but I'm also going to make a completely separate video on what it is that I do in my job. I expect those two videos coming up but yeah I thought I'd just dive into the questions and answer some of them. So to start somebody said how do you use math in your work? So in my previous job role I did a lot of optimization mathematics so I would do literature reviews on the latest optimization techniques and that maths I enjoyed it but it wasn't the maths that I absolutely love and I love more continuum mechanics and astrodynamics astrophysics. So so now in my new job role, which is as a, essentially an astrodynamicist for this software, I am doing all the maths and the physics behind essentially simulating a spacecraft. It's very orbital mechanics, very orbital dynamics. It's really, really cool. I really enjoy it. And hopefully I'll be able to give you a bit more insight when I do my day in the life videos. Somebody said, was taking a master's in general or doing part three a mandatory requirement for your job? A lot of space companies do require you to have a master's because for me personally, I learned so much in my master's that I think helped me a lot when it came to joining a job full time. I think it depends on the job role. Again, I'll go into this in my video about how to get into the space industry. A master's in the space industry is usually required. And part three, which is the degree that I did my master's, which is uh, part three of the mathematical tripos at the University of Cambridge, that wasn't a requirement that I don't think that's a requirement for anything unless you want to do a PhD at Cambridge itself. My specific master's wasn't a requirement, but I think a master's in general might be a requirement. But again, I'm gonna do some research and give you all the information you need for that video that I'll talk about how to get into the space industry. Somebody asked, what is the best and worst part of your job? Ooh, that's a really good question. The best part I think is just the fact that I love what I do. It's the math, it's the physics, it's the coding. I honestly just love it. I love that I get to do a job that I genuinely enjoy. I love the team that I work with. The biggest part for me is learning. I have to be in a job where I'm continually learning. To be in a job where I absolutely love what I do is, is probably the best part. The worst part, I guess, is because I enjoy it so much, I spend too long. <laughs> I spend a lot of my spare time working on my job, which I'm trying to kind of deviate away from now to focus on my YouTube channel and stuff. I had a really nice comment and this they didn't even ask a question, they just put thank you so much for always inspiring us. Hope you have a great day today, which was just lovely. So someone asked academia versus industry, which to choose. During my third and fourth year, I was set on doing a PhD. I knew that I loved coding and I knew that you could get PhDs with coding. And I remember having kind of a lot of conversations with people on my masters and it was people who had jumped straight into do a PhD after they'd finished their masters. And it was also people who had taken time out. I kind of came to the conclusion that I know that I love space and I did an internship with the UK space agencies space placements and industry scheme and I absolutely love that so I knew that I wanted to work in the space industry I just then was like do I do a PhD 
for four years and not know or do I try get a job in the space industry and then figure out if that's what I want to do for me I'm very glad I've done that I definitely want to do a PhD at some point in the future but what I'm doing now is like I, I love it so I'm very glad that I chose to go into industry I think a lot of people recommend doing industry before you do a PhD just so you you know f- exactly what you want because a lot of people do a PhD then realize that it didn't actually propel them in the industry that they wanted to be in. Sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes you need to do a PhD to get where you want to be in the industry. It depends on your personal situation. and I guess it's up to you, really. Someone said, how do you get math so well? I I think because I love it so much, it kind of just comes naturally to me. I really like the the intricacy of certain problems as well. Bit of a nerd, but yeah, I love maths. Somebody said, do you struggle sometimes with imposter syndrome? Oh, yeah. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, a lot, definitely. This is something that I, I don't know if I've actually mentioned it on my channel before about imposter syndrome, but it's it's a thing, it's very real, and I have experienced it a lot. I experienced it massively when I went on to my master's. I don't know what it was, I just decided to compare myself against everybody else, and then halfway through the term I realised that was not the thing to do. And even now, like I think it's something that I struggle with a lot, is believing in myself and believing in my ability. As much as I say, oh yeah, you know, I went to Cambridge, I, I've I have all these achievements. I still kind of don't feel like I've achieved that. It's, I still have this imposter syndrome around that, but I'm definitely getting better at it. I think what I've just realized is I've just got to believe in myself and and that's the best thing you can do. Jojo said, what do you think is your greatest achievement in life so far? My greatest achievement? Honestly, I would say like graduating from Cambridge. Before that, I probably would have said my motocross championship. I was a British motocross champion. I used to race for Honda, which is, might come as a bit of a surprise to people because I, I mentioned it on my channel like in a couple of random videos, but I haven't really posted much about it. Yeah, that, that was my biggest achievement before Cambridge. And then I got to Cambridge and that was one of the hardest years of my life. Just like, it was so intense. Yeah, I learned a lot that year and yeah, I smile when I think about it because I'm just like, yeah, I did that. Nice job, Ellie. <laughs> so somebody put, how? Just how? How did you achieve your goals? I'm distracted. One thing I've always said on this channel is like, do something you really enjoy because you'll find motivation so easily. So doing things that I enjoy is so much easier than trying to force myself to do things that I don't. To achieve your goals, maybe set goals that that align with things that you enjoy. I also think just a bit of discipline. Yeah, I'm trying to get a bit more disciplined with my YouTube channel. <laughs> Somebody said, how do you cope with sexism in STEM? It's a very important question. I'm very fortunate at the moment with where I work. There are obviously a lot more men in my company to be expected in the space industry, but I've never experienced any form of sexism at work, which like, I was gonna say I'm, I'm grateful for that, but I shouldn't have to be grateful. Like that should just never happen anyway. I don't experience anything at, at work, which is which is great and I haven't throughout the space industry in general. I have had moments in classes and meeting people at university where they probably said things that they shouldn't. I always remind myself that that's got nothing to do with me and everything to do with them. It's got absolutely nothing to do with me or my ability. Just because I'm a woman, I'm I'm not any less intelligent than men. And that's something that I've really tried to grasp, especially because I, I've constantly been in a very male dominated environment from when I first started racing motorbikes and then you know, maths at uni, I specialised in fluid dynamics, which was just mainly guys, uh, again on my masters, and now in the space industry. And I I think the biggest thing that I am constantly working towards uh, for myself is just believing in my ability and ignoring any nasty comments I may get. I did post a reel on Instagram and I got some awful comments. Like, it was just a video basically being like, point of view, you work for a space company. And I got some comments that were like diversity hire, basically saying I only got hired because I was a woman. Oh, get back in the kitchen. Or like the qu- the kitchen must be cool and stuff like that. And those comments to start with, I was a bit hurt by them. I was like, oh my gosh, no, I'm, I wasn't hired because I'm a woman. I'm hired because I... I'm good at what I do. If I believe in myself and my abilities, then I can say things like, I'm good at what I do. And that helps conquer imposter syndrome. Yeah, to start with, those comments were quite nasty, but then I realized it's got everything to do with them. They're clearly not happy in themselves to have those opinions and and to be so mean to other people. We're all about spreading love and positivity on my channels, so there's no room for those. But in terms of like, how do I cope with it? I just ignore it the best I can and remind myself that I'm here not because I'm a woman, I'm here because I'm good at what I do. I've had a lot of people ask me how did I learn coding so I learned a bit of coding on my degree but I hated it to begin with. We learned a bit in first year and I I hated it and then I did a module in second year which introduced us to Python and I absolutely loved it. Then I just kind of taught myself on on the side doing little projects and stuff so I didn't really have a, a typical way into coding. I just 
found YouTube videos and learned. And then I loved what I did so much that I made a, a YouTube channel teaching people how to code. And yeah, I, I love doing that as well because I learn from teaching as well. I'll make a, a full video on my journey from coding. And then I've had a lot of people ask like, what coding languages have I been using? So at work, I work in Rust, C++, C, Python, and that's what I work in because I'm doing heavily maths mathematics stuff but there are other members that use more front-end development yes yeah, so there's a lot of programming languages used at work but those are the ones that, that i work with in particular i'm also just just scrolling through i've had quite a lot about my academic background and i realized that i i kind of just assume that when you watch my videos you know about my background but i realized that i haven't actually addressed that massively so i think i'll, I'll also make a separate video on my academic journey somebody asked is my job hard and can I say positive and negative things about it? So I've already done the best and worst thing, but in terms of is my job hard, I would say that what I do is 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 quite hard, but because I love it so much, I enjoy it. So it's less hard, if that makes sense. The stuff I'm doing isn't easy stuff. It's, it's quite a task and I'm the only one responsible for it. So there's more pressure in that sense. I, I love it. So I'm just constantly like, yeah, cool. Like I get to do this. It's hard, but I enjoy it, so. Somebody said, name that book you're reading nowadays. So I have just filmed a video on these three books that I read and they are Andy Weir's books. If you've heard of The Martian, that's this one. I've been reading these books and I've done an honest book review, but the one that I post on my Instagram story a lot is actually this one right here, which I'm currently in the middle of reading and it's essentially just Einstein's journey. I've messed up my aesthetic now, oh well. I just had so many lovely messages. I got so many messages, like private messages, that I haven't even had a chance to respond to. So if you've sent me a private message and I haven't had a chance to respond, I'm really sorry. I have just been genuinely so busy. I see all your messages and I just want to say, if you've sent me a message, I see them. Thank you so much, they're so nice. But I just want to have some quiet time where I can just sit and reply to you all because I do really appreciate all the all the love and support that I get. Honestly, all of these questions are just related to my job. Like, <laughs> and it's the same question over and over and over. So I'm gonna make some separate videos on the questions that got asked the most. That was the q and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions, comment them down below. I'm much better at replying to questions in my comment section on YouTube than on Instagram. Thank you so much to everybody that asked me questions. Uh, if I didn't get a chance to answer anything you sent in, put it down in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer. But yeah, thank you so much for supporting this channel and thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, then please like, subscribe and comment. But I'll see you all in the next one.